Number four then from the 2022 Advanced Higher Paper 1, Implicit Differentiation. What does it say? A curve is defined by the equation, this is it given here, and you have to find an expression for dy by dx, but it says use implicit differentiation to do that. So there's three marks here, because this equation, although it looks all scrambled up, it's not actually implicit, because there's only one mention of x, and that's the first power of x, so that could be rearranged to read x equals, and then it wouldn't be an implicit equation. But keeping it the way it is, if it says you have to use implicit differentiation, then that just means treat y as a function of x. Well, because it is a function of x, obviously. Once you've chosen x, the value of y depends on it, some function of it. So if y is a function of x, when you differentiate a term like this, you've actually got the chain rule, because you'll have to differentiate with respect to y, and then differentiate y with respect to x. So that's the way you start it off. So what have we got? We've got just treating that as a y, you've got 3, which it is obviously, you've got 3y squared, but then multiply it by the inner derivative dy by dx. That's a chain rule. That would just be dy by dx. This is a product. So taking the 2 with the x, if I differentiate 2x, because they each take their turn, if I differentiate 2x, I get a 2. The y is waiting. Now the 2x waits, and the y gets done. There you go, dy by dx, and of course one disappears, because it doesn't change, so it's not got a rate of change. Now, that's worth two marks. Essentially, that's worth two marks, isn't it? I mean, they, they, they sort of split up and say, using the chain rule and using the product rule, but essentially it's two marks for doing the sort of the two bits. Now, I need to gather that up, because I have to find dy by dx. Well, I've got these three terms in dy by dx, so I'll take them all over here. So I've got to do y by dx. It's just the one we term over here. I've only got a 2y. So over here, what have I got all together? I've got a 3y squared. You can put them in any order you like. I could put plus 4 and then have the 2x. Or I could put the letters first and the numbers after. It makes no difference. It's computative. Might I'll put that in first. Minus 2x plus 4. And then obviously finally, I'll have 2y and I'll take all of that across and divide by it. And that's it. Three marks. So part B, just for the one mark, Find the gradient of the tangent to the curve when y is negative 1. Now, in order to find the gradient, I'm going to have to use this equation, but in order to find the gradient, I need both x and y. I need the x and y coordinates of the point. Well, it's only one mark, so I'm going to have to do two things. I have to find x first. So I need to go back to the uh, coordinate equation here. I'll just give that a name, equation 1. Right, so if I put that in equation 1... I'm going to end up with negative 1 cubed plus 4 times negative 1 is 2x times negative 1 plus 1. That's a negative 2x. Bring that over. That leaves that 1 there. That's a negative 5. That makes that a 6. So that means x is 3. Now I can pop it in. I've got the two coordinates. So the gradient will be dy by dx. Now I can pop it into that. Make sure you put the correct numbers in the correct place. So it's 2y, that's this, over 3y squared. That's still this, but that's minus 2x, so it'll be that. And then plus 4. So what does that come to for m? I've got negative 2, oh, I've started, negative 2 over, that'll be a 3 and a 4 is 7, but take away a 6 is 1. Oh well, so I've just got m equals negative 2. Even though there were two steps, there's only one mark for the final answer. Part C then, for two marks, show that the curve has no stationary points. It sounds a wee bit more convoluted than find the stationary points. Show it has no stationary points. Well, anyway, just 
see what's going on. To get a stationary point, that means that dy by dx would have to equal zero. So just start from there. Now, I could write the whole thing out again, but if there's a fractional expression equal to zero, it's sufficient for the numerator to equal zero. Well, that means that the y-coordinate must be zero. Now I need to find the x-coordinate. So I'll take that, and there's a mark for that. There's a mark for getting y equals zero. Now I'll find the x-coordinate. So I'll take that y equals zero, and I'll put it into the coordinate equation, so I can find the x-coordinate. It doesn't look... Right, so we pop that in there. So I've got zero cubed plus four times zero is two x times zero. Well, that's a bit of a pest. Plus one. Well, that means you can't find x because looks what's happened. It's got knocked out. So it all just disappears. Not only does it disappear, not only has it hidden it, so you can't get at it, this equation's turned into nonsense. Because look, this comes to zero and this comes to one. No, I'm not going to write zero equals one. Look, that's nonsense. So the only way I can say that this is nonsense is by saying, well, if the left-hand side is zero and the right-hand side is one, that means that you've got an inconsistent equation, which means you can't find the x, which would indicate that there's no stationary point, because that's what usually happens with the equation. If they don't work, it's because there wasn't actually an answer. So I'll just have to finish that off that way. Inconsistent, so no stationary point. That would be the second mark. Well, I suppose you knew something was afoot anyway, so why did that happen? I mean, it's, that's quite an unsatisfactory answer, isn't it? You, know, you couldn't get at it, so we'll just say, oh, that's the, game's, the game's a bogey. No, look at this equation again. If you rearrange that equation to get x equals, then that would read 2xy is y cubed plus 4y minus 1. So x equals y cubed plus 4y minus 1 over 2y. Whoops. Now, something went wrong when y was 0. You can see straight away what went wrong. If you make y equals to 0, you've got something, well, negative 1, divided by 0, so it just blows up. It goes to infinity. So as y... So y doesn't actually get to zero. So what this says is, there would be a stationary point if y was zero, so it must be heading that way. It must be heading down to a gradient of zero. But if y is zero, the whole thing blows up, so it doesn't ever get there. Because as y tends to zero, x tends to infinity. Now, that's the problem with this exam, because you don't do... Um, rational functions, you're not meant to know about asymptotes. What you've got here actually is an asymptote. As y tends to zero, x tends to infinity. If I had my graph, that's the y and there's the x. As y tends to zero, in other words, as, that's maybe a zero. as y gets very small and becomes almost zero, well, there's two ways I can get there, the corresponding x coordinate would just fly off. Now, which way does it fly off, though? Well, on top, you've got a minus 1. Now, that would hardly be significant for most numbers. It's just a tiny wee number 1. It's just sitting there on its own. But if y is tending to 0, if y is becoming very, very small, that 1 becomes huge. They're just like wee flies buzzing about. They make no difference to it. As y tends to 0, the top just becomes a negative 1. So you could say this. As y tends to zero, let's make it positive, from above. In other words, if I'm up here and getting down towards zero, what happens to the x-coordinate? Well, the top just becomes negative one because they have nothing in comparison to it. But that's positive. So that means x is going to tend to, well, I'll just put this wee fraction in front of the uh, infinity sign here. If the top's negative one, but the bottom's positive, that's going to be negative infinity. So that means that for this part, as y tends to zero from above, it should be shooting off to negative infinity. So it's coming like this. So you can see the graph's trying to get to zero. It's going to become horizontal. You will get a gradient of zero, 
but it's just not going to get there. And correspondingly, when y is negative, that means x is going to tend to, let's put it over there, that'll be a negative or a negative. Now, that's always negative one, but now the bottom's negative, so the whole thing's positive. So underneath it must look something like this. I don't know what happens in the middle. But you didn't need to know any of that, of course. Because there was only a wee two mark question, so you're, you're meant to just finish with inconsistent, no stationary point. But so what was the reason? That was the reason. You'd ask some totes going on there. <laughs>